Well, it occurs to it occurs to me today to ask you why you did spend all those hours, sometimes days, sobbing on the bed in London, because <laughs> you never would give me a satisfactory answer. It used to drive me crazy. I have no idea. How am I supposed to remember that? That's like over 25 years ago. Well, obviously, evidently, you were very upset, so you'd think it would have made quite an impact to get to that level of of uh, emotion. It was probably the weather. <laughs> the weather. <laughs> but I guess it's a... I guess looking back on those days, I think I, I exhibited the classic male behaviour. Not that I want to generalise, but I think it is pretty classic for the male domain. Is to try and, try and go in and fix things. And it was like, I was like this person running around in the dark, trying to find a window to open, and throwing all these different <laughs> possibilities as to why you might be so upset and getting no feedback whatsoever other than more tears and more wails. <laughs> What would I say? Nothing? There's nothing wrong? You'd say, you'd just, you just boo-hoo even louder. <laughs> I Never. wouldn't say anything. No, I would, and I would like desperately trying to like throw up all these scenarios that as to why you might be upset and how pointless it all was and that you're only just making a bad situation worse. You're dwelling on the negative. I think that was my classic refrain in those days. I was probably upset with you. I guess so. I didn't want to tell you. <laughs> Knowing what we know now, I guess in such a low mood, I would become the figurehead for any kind of uh, difficulties that you were having. <laughs> That's right. On the emotional front. And knowing what we know now, you would know it would be okay to leave me alone because I would stabilize. Yeah, no, absolutely. God, how I wish I did that. I mean, at the time, it was kind of like probably trying to do bomb disposal and with a pair of un oven mitts. <laughs> It was no hope of getting anywhere positive. <laughs> Just go from bad to worse, and ultimately this this big giant explosion. And we're I kept blowing up. You kept blowing up, and I I get I get burnt in the process. <laughs> But it's true, it's just, you know, if I were just left you to your own devices and, and had the understanding that, you know, you have your own wisdom, it's universal, that that's going to do the work, that's going to do the heavy lifting. All I have to do is just like, it's hands off, let her deal with this herself and she'll self-correct. I really don't have to do anything. Yeah. And other than maybe be compassionate That'd and just see, nice. your, see your humanity. <laughs> I think I was really lonely. I'm trying to remember now. It's where we felt very alone and lonely in London, stranger in a strange land. I don't know, there were probably an accumulation of different things. But I would now, looking back, if I knew then what I know now, I would be able to recognize that it was this low mood that I was getting caught up in and that my innate happiness would come back to the surface and it didn't matter if I was living in a different country and didn't know anyone. Yeah, I mean, that's just such an easy perspective to have. But at the time, I was racking my brains trying to figure out what the hell was going on, how I can fix this, how I can, how I can change you for the better. <laughs> you weren't having any of it. All I had to do was just take my hands off the controls, give up control, let go of those fears, the fears of a failing, what may be a failing relationship or, or things falling apart. I just had to just uh, take a back seat to it all. It would have all been fine, as long as I had some level of compassion around it all, saw your humanity, hmm. which probably all I saw was this like maniacal woman going nuts on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note... <laughs> But things have changed, thankfully. We've both changed. We both see things differently. I think we both see each other's humanity. I mean, that's really all it, all it boils down to. We're going to have our ups and downs. We don't need to take the downs so seriously. And be graceful with the highs and... Sorry, grateful for the highs and graceful with the lows. That's right. Is that a George Prensky As George Prensky would say. But that's basically what it boils down to. Yeah. And I think we both take ourselves a lot less seriously, or I definitely take myself a lot less seriously now, my own thinking less seriously. No, for sure. Yeah. Have a great weekend, everyone. Yeah, have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.